Sir, the beast of the evening story. Why is that? What the fuck? Sir, the beast of the evening story. Because we're gonna do this all day, so we don't have much time. I talked about this before. Remember, your intention in whatever job you do is da'wah. Look, Ibn Al Qayyim, rahmatullahi alayhi, he said there are three rules. If you just remember these three, alif thumma arif thumma kalif. Very easy. Alif, alif al qulub, reconcile the hearts. Let them at least uh, not hate you. How is that? Because uh, you know what? You're a Muslim? Yes. You know, they have 111. <laughs> May Allah help you, Wallahi. So, you know, when people come knock on our doors, and the Mashaykh will testify that I want to become a Muslim. Why? Did somebody shove Islam down your throat? No, did somebody come knock on your door? Did we actually tell you, listen, if you don't become a Muslim, we'll shoot you, we will take oil away from you? He says, no. So why do you want to become a Muslim? Because I met Brother Muhammad or I met Sister Fatima and they were really the nicest people. When they said a word, they promised, they fulfilled it, and, 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 I mean, I don't have enough time to go into it. But they, what I mentioned earlier is they lived Islam. So they actually liked the person. And when they like the person, they arif, then raise awareness, then kalif, then obligate, educate, then obligate. No matter what, you will need fiqh al You understand you live here now. This is called home, right? So you better act accordingly. Do not alienate yourself and don't say that, uh, you know, the us and we, it's uh, us and them. No, it's we. The topic for today's discussion is actually very, very interesting. We will be discussing the Ummah and our responsibility. We see a lot of atrocities happening in the Muslim Ummah. We see many things happening both in the West and in Muslim countries. So we want to find out today, inshallah, from this discussion, what is really the situation of the Ummah today and what is our responsibility in that regards. The first concern, inshallah, I want to mention is many Muslims, mashallah, here are they have passion for the deen, they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they love Islam, and they want to do the best to serve the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they see that Muslim lands are under attack by non-Muslims, and women are being, subhanAllah, treated in the worst manner, Muslim women. They see or they hear about Muslim, Muslim women getting raped and going through really, really, really bad things in such countries such as Syria, or they hear about the war in Afghanistan. So the question is, how should we as Muslims living in the West relate to these big, big topics? Should we be concerned? If we should be concerned, how should we proactively use our energy to serve the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is our responsibility in this regards? I would inshallah want Sheikh Saeed to say some words. And the Shaykh, it's open for you if you want to, whenever you want to step in or anything, inshallah, it's, it's an open discussion, inshallah. So this is the first topic we will discuss, and then we will inshallah move to the next topic, inshallah. Sheikh Saeed. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Well, when we see our 
brothers and sisters around the world are suffering, are in calamity and difficulties and hardship, are encountering um, things that are uh, difficult for a human being to encounter. First of all, we need to reflect upon ourselves. Reflect upon ourselves. As Muslims, as believers, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is tribulating us? Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, is letting us to go through these tribulations and these difficulties and these hardships? And we need to reflect upon our actions and our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, these tribulations and these difficulties and these hardships that we're having, it might be a punishment for us because of our deeds, our uh, sins. And that will require from us to ensure that we have a strong connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that we return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala in the Quran said, وَبَلَوْنَاهُمْ بِالْحَسَنَاتِ وَالسَّيِّئَاتِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ And we tribulated them with that which is good and that which is bad so that they may return back to us. So once we see that we are going through tribulations, difficulties, hardship, or our brothers are going through this, we should return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala straight away. We should try and reflect upon ourselves and see that if we have any shortcoming with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then we have to ensure that we return back to Allah azza wa jalla and ensure that we are uh, strongly connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty. The second thing is we will have to feel that we are one body. We all the Muslims are one body. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he described the believers, he said that the Muslims, the example of the Muslims in their kindness and in their love to one another is like one body. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many verses in the Quran, when he addressed us about th certain things, he addressed us as one soul. When he said to us, do not... Uh, do not mock one another. He said, وَلَا تَلْمِزُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ And do not mock yourselves. Or do not call one another with things that are with your own faults. So he mentioned us as one soul, one body, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when he spoke about that, we should have always a, the benefit of the doubt when, whenever we hear anything about, whenever we hear anything about uh, other Muslims, he said, لَوْلَا إِذْ سَمِعْتُمُوهُ ظَنَّ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بِأَنفُسِهِمْ خَيْرًا And once, once you heard the uh, news about Aisha رضي الله عنها, you should have had a good thinking about yourselves. And he mentioned it that we are one body and one soul and that uh, should be the case all the time. Muslims should always think that we are one soul and one body. And therefore, whenever we see our brothers and sisters are suffering or going through tribulations anywhere in this world, we should uh, first of all do our best to help them, do our best to relieve them from their difficulties and their hardship. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the sound hadith when he was asked about the best action that a person can do, in, can do or the most beloved action to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that a person can do, and the most beloved people to Allah, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied saying, the most beloved person to Allah is the one who is the most beneficial to others. And the most beloved action to Allah is a happiness that you cause to your brother, or you relieve him from his anger, or you relieve him from his calamity and difficulty. Or you pay off his debt. So helping your brother, helping your uh, brother or sister in need comes, one of, uh, comes as one of the most beloved actions to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should try our best to help them and relieve them and uh, be with them inshallah ta'ala and also make dua for them. Make dua for them. And uh, I'll conclude that we have to as well, uh, I will emphasize on the first matter that we have to reflect on our actions. 
because tribulations come uh, because generally because sins because our short coming to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then they will be removed once we return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once we return back to Allah the almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala and I think the shaykh may add more inshallah ta'ala on this sallallahu alayhi wa muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi jazakallah khair shaykh shaykh Haith can we have some sound please let us have more questions. Then. More questions? Yeah, inshallah. Okay, inshallah. The next question is, the masses of Muslims in Norway, they are not practicing Islam. The masses of Muslims of Norway, they are not at this conference, even though, mashallah, we have many Muslims here. But I believe there's approximately 100,000 Muslims or even more. But the masses of them, they are far, far away from the deen. You will find them in the nightclubs. You will find them in the streets. You will find them smoking. You will find them drinking alcohol. So the question is, what is our responsibility in this regards? Is it okay that we just practice Islam for ourselves? Or do we have to be concerned about them? And if we do have to be concerned, what exactly should we do? Sheikh Wasim, inshallah. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ba'd. I think what you are mentioning about Muslims in, in Norway is not something uh, specific and only for Norway. Okay? I think what you find in the Muslim world that you find that there are people who are closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then there are people who are a little further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now it's a very big topic however there are a couple of things I'd like to mention and that is that being a Muslim is or being chosen as a Muslim by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest ni'mah that can be given to anyone. And recognizing and knowing that blessing is the next stage. Being grateful and thanking Allah Azza wa Jal. Internally, within yourself, recognizing that. And then secondly, active, acting upon that ni'mah that Allah gave to you. For us to strengthen ourselves and I think that you coming here together, sitting together for a number of days, is a good sign. The fact that you have this large arena and that it's filled with Muslims, filled with people, I think is a great sign. I think definitely it is a show of progress and you may find that last week maybe one of us was doing something last weekend doing something which was pure disobedience pure disobedience to Allah however upon coming to this conference I happened to listen to a talks happened to meet a few people and my life changed it is very easy for us, when we look at people, to judge and to pass rulings upon people. It's very easy. And most of the time when looking and judging people, I'm not part of that judgment. I don't look at myself. Because maybe, maybe I think that I'm doing enough. I believe that all of us were not doing enough. We're not doing enough for ourselves, we're not doing enough for one another. However, most certainly establishing conferences like this and ensuring that after this conference that the Muslims have an opportunity to continue practicing their faith, that this is something that would ena enable us for those who are maybe once upon a time, maybe in places and doing things that they shouldn't be doing, and bringing them back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
This is what we need to do. I believe, wallahu alam, is my opinion, one of the many things that we need to be doing is to remind people and educate them about the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because many of us are very ignorant about it. So to educate ourselves, to remove that jahil so that we can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu ta'ala. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh. Basically, what I understand from your answer is that each and every one needs to seek knowledge and uh, be able to educate other people. Is that correct, Shaykh? Yes, To be wise as well in your da'wah. To be wise. Don't be harsh. Be fair and be just and be, and be wise. Don't turn people away. We need to be very you know, wise with each other. This is from the Quran. Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah. Call to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with, with Quran and Sunnah, with wisdom. Look how the Prophet والسلام, would, would bring people to Islam with wisdom. And this is something that, you know, we are missing a lot. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh. Would any of the other Shaykh like to add anything to that? Shaykh Ala? No, Okay, mashallah. Before we take the next question, inshallah. We have a short announcement to make. There is an orange sports car parked outside blocking the way for someone else. So if uh, the brother owning that car, inshallah, can move that car, that would be very thankful. Jazakallah khair. And there has been a Samsung Galaxy S3 phone stolen from the child care. So please, you who stole that phone, please just give it back, inshallah ta'ala. Astaghfirullah. The next issue we want to address, inshallah, relating to the topic of the ummah and our responsibility is the secular school system in Norway or in, an, or in any other Western country where they don't have any Muslim schools. In our country, our Muslim youth are going to these non-Muslim schools and being influenced in a very negative way where they are starting to even doubt Islam or, do not, they don't, and, or they feel that Islam is not the best way of life. They feel inferior to the secular civilization. So my question is, what is our responsibility in this regard? What can we do in regards, in regards to the secular educational system and the Muslims don't having and not having any Muslim schools in our country? And I would like some advice that each and every single person can actually act upon and make a difference in this regard. Sheikh Haytham, would you like to comment on this? I think it is. Sheikh Ala? No. Sheikh Ala. Okay. This is your feet. <laughs> Subhanallah. Yeah. Khair, inshallah. Okay. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulullah. Amma ba'd, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my dear brothers and sisters. This is uh, the $100,000 question they usually say. Uh, you know that there is usually a discussion between a uh, married couple uh, just before, you know, the time they get into uh, the education system. Do we uh, take him into a public school? Do we take him into uh, an Islamic school? Actually, there's a new discussion now. Do we just homeschool? So you have options and, uh, you know, actually coming up with a, a new course about parenting looked into the statistics and the the three uh, has the pros and cons believe it or not there's positive and negatives of uh, each one of them however you have to actually discuss this with uh, your spouse and my recommendation for you is to write down the pros and cons according to your local area because they're not the same everywhere by the way so the recommendation is write them down why because it's a it's a physical and visual evidence that you actually need to know. You don't just keep it in your mind. So what you discuss, if we, him into, if we put him into the Islamic school, here's the pros and here's the cons. And unfortunately, most of the time, in the Islamic schools, we don't have the resources to be able to provide the, the, the services, the education, or the high level of uh, the public system. Especially if you have a needy child with the, uh, uh, like a, a need, more skills, more speech impairment, all that. They don't have it. We don't have it. But, uh, you know, the Islamic schools, we can't afford to pay the, the teachers. 
the same wages as the public schools, so we have a high turnover. So there's no consistency of the of the teachers. So maybe even you know what? What's your qualification? La ilaha illa Muhammad. So okay, you're hired. Or you know what? You have a beard. Do you have a hijab? Or you have this? So the, I'm just talking real now, right? I'm talking straight out. I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'll tell you like it is because I've dealt with Islamic schools for years. I was one of the counselors in different cities. I, I, I'm actually in a, in, a, in a center that has Islamic school, and I deal with them one, once a week. So it's, it is a difficult decision. I'm not going to tell you it's going to be an easy decision, but all my the, the advice to the couples are, you have to make that decision based on facts. So write down the pros and cons for everyone, either public school or Islamic school or home school, and look at the pros and cons. And you have to weigh out what your priority for your children at the time. What means more to you for your child at a time? Is it more of a secular uh, education that means more to you than the Islamic education? Maybe I can uh, have a PhD, you know, but my child will uh, not uh, know the ABC, ABCs about, or the one, two, threes about Islam, right? So <clears throat> my advice is to have a, a, the best of both worlds. But not on the account where you lose your identity and you lose your religion. That is uh, obviously, uh, that's a given. So why don't we have, uh, let's say, uh, on the door of, the, of your child, you know, Dr. Sheikh Hafid Fulan, right? Why do we always have to say, you know what, you, 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 have, make a, you have to make a choice. Either the Ilm uh, al-Din or Ilm al-Tin, right? That's what it's called. It's either this or that. Why don't we be the best doctors, the best engineers, the best lawyers, the best politicians, the best whatever it is, best media people that have the work with their field within Quran and Sunnah. They become the best da'iyas, they become successful people, they can actually uh, have the, the best uh, high level of education, but they are a hafiz, they are a alim. And I've seen them, I've known some of these brothers that are a doctor and they've actually learned in Medina. There are actually, not, I'm not talking PhD uh, doctors in their field, they're doctor as a physical doctor, actual doctor, med medical doctor. But they actually went to Medina and studied this, right? So this is the combination that I look for, this is the combination I'm going to present and I ask for my children to be. And that's what they're going. They're going to seek the knowledge, the path of the Sharia, ah, they learn. And they also seek the best of knowledge, and they are A students by, yeah, forgive me, I mean, they are the, uh, that's bad. <laughs> but there's, you still have to be the best. Why? Because we're asked to be the best. We're asked to be the best in everything. We're asked to perfect this ihsan in every field we do. I may have not given you the answer that you're looking for, but it's very difficult to give a specifics. So I'm, my recommendation is to go to your local imam because they know the, what's going on in your in area. I am not in this area. So if the people come to me, I will tell them straight out. Here's what happens in our community. I don't know what's going on in your community. So my recommendation is to go to your local imam. But I've just given you a general advice. That's all I can do for now. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show us that what is right as right. And follow it and show us that what is wrong as wrong. And stay away from it. May Allah choose what's best for us. Ameen. Allahu a'lam. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh. Sheikh Haytham, you want to add something? Uh, you wanted to ask me something. I wanted to ask you something, Sheikh. What was it? Because I know what you want to say, Sheikh. What is it? And I want you to say, say it. Uh -huh. <coughs> uh, as, we, as we see, mashallah, the, from what I understand from Sheikh Ala's answer is that we should not have to choose between the secular education or the Islamic education. We need to be top in both fields to s summarize. Is that correct, Sheikh? Is it correct, Sheikh? Or did I misunderstand everything? SubhanAllah, I misunderstood. Can, I, can someone please explain what the Sheikh said to me? <laughs> Go ahead, Sheikh. No, no, no. Summarize, no, Sheikh. No. Is that oh, you're talking to me? I thought you were talking to Sheikh Haytham no, no, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. <laughs> so I'm waiting for Sheikh Haytham. Go ahead, please. No, that is correct. I mean, we are asked to be the best in everything. That's my recommendation again. No. To reiterate, but as I said, you cannot... Uh, Take the secular education if you know that you're going through a fitna, right? We talked about the shahwat and shubuhat yesterday, right? Your whims and desires and the ambiguity or the unclear about the, your religion. Do not ever lose your identity as a Muslim, first and foremost.
But that, that's exactly the problem because we, you, you are talking about higher education now. When you come to the level of higher education, the Muslim brothers and sisters, most of them, inshallah, will have, or those who already are practicing, yes, they would have a certain level of iman. So they will not lose that iman if they study higher education. But we're talking about this, the kindergarten, not okay. the kindergarten, but what do you call the first school? Yeah, no the, problem. The, ch the children's Fine. school, okay. mashallah. These are true stories. I've been through it. I've been 36 years in Canada, and I can tell you it was not easy. And I can tell you if you're born and raised here, it'll probably be easier for you. But if you come from whatever we call back home, very difficult. Because obviously some of you may not have the language yet. Uh, you don't know the, the culture and, 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 and that aspect. You look different, you speak different, you dress different. So some of us may change the name. And you, oh, I'm sure we talked about this before, right? From uh, Muhammad to Mot, from Fatima to Queen Latifah, from Dahlia to Delicious. From, uh, uh, you, you go through that, which is, this is fine. Don't beat yourself up. Is it but, fine? Is it funny? I don't know. I <laughs> It is not when, obviously, uh, you know, when somebody says, uh, I think it's uh, one, of, I can't remember the, the brother's name. He says, you know, when somebody says, Assalamu Alaikum, then he, shh, <laughs> come here. You go somewhere else, Wa Alaikum Assalam, man, they don't know I'm a Muslim here. <laughs> <laughs> so, not to that extent. You understand, and I've, what I've noticed here in the community, they're very welcoming. I'm serious, like what I've seen so far and what I've heard so far, the, the Norwegian people are very accommodating. And I've heard a lot of good things about it. Now, we cannot be in your face, right? And we heard the shaykh, he says, the da'wah is with a smile. And I know that some of the brothers think that the, the, their teeth are awra, right? They can't smile. <laughs> but I can't show them my teeth because they're like private parts. And I say, hey, shame, ya, ya, haram. Why? why, man? So why don't we use us being in the community, being ambassadors of Islam? I'm sure you hear the, the, this all the time. And if you decide to go, According to the, year, the best of your knowledge, the pros and cons, masalih mafasid, and so on, you know, you have to be there and you're, you're a walking pulpit, you're a walking Quran, you're a walking da'wah, you're an ambassador of Islam. Why do you use that? Remember, and uh, by the way, and the scholars will tell you, they ask you about say, you don't force Islam down the throat, the, the people, you just live Islam. Then they will ask you, uh, hey man, I don't see a girlfriend uh, with you all the time. What's going on? Are you a happy person? Like, yeah, I mean, you're just so sweet. What, what's going on? <laughs> you're so different. No, no, no. You see, uh, in Islam, we do one, two, three. Uh, well, you know what? Well, I don't see you dr eating and drinking at that time. Uh, I'm on a diet. No, tell them, listen, I'm fasting, man. I'm a Muslim. Well, the reason is one, two, three. You can use that. There's alunak. The scholar says, when they ask you, they're ready. Qul, talqiniya. Tell them. So you can use that as da'wah. So look on the positive path, but again, this is one way, it's a challenge, but as if you're fighting when the army is fled. The reward is high. Never compensate, and I can show you, I will finish with this inshallah. I've seen this, one brother sent me a link, and I, I believe he's in somewhere in Europe. The brother has a real beard, and he was wearing, he's playing basketball with a team. Apparently his team is somewhere in Europe, and they won. And there is, uh, when you know when you win, uh, 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 a sister in humanity, <laughs> Uh, I don't want to say dressed because she wasn't. <laughs> something. And they come up with a tray, right? To give the team something. And this brother has a kufi and the beard down to here and long shorts and everything. So he's trying to look away, trying to look away. And I'm like, Where do you look away? She's all over the place, man. <laughs> so Allah, the brother went like this. <laughs> so yeah, you try to uh, lower your gaze in the area. May Allah help you, inshallah. It's not going to be easy. The reward is multiplied. May Allah give you strength, inshallah. Wallahu Jazakallah khair, Shaykh. So Shaykh Haytham, I want you to, inshallah, elaborate a little bit about, yes, the secular education influencing the Muslim children. Many of them are starting to doubt even Islam being the truth. And the parents, they don't have much choice because they don't have any Islamic schools in our country. So what exactly should they do? Should they be working towards establishing Islamic schools? If yes, what can an individual do? Or should they be in the field of educating more Muslim teachers maybe? That uh, m practicing Muslims, they start studying the field of teachers so they can at least infiltrate, if you can, if you can use that word, the non-Muslim schools and inshallah spread the khair. Not infiltrate in a negative way if there's any non-Muslim say, we just want to give you the best, you know, the best, inshallah, Islam, you know. You know, in Islam. Shaykh Haytham, inshallah. As you said, that in Norway there are no Muslim schools. 
the only Muslim school that was established maybe last year or two years ago was a Shia school, as far as I know. It's not even established. Yeah, it is not yet established even. They are trying. <coughs> anyway, so uh, there is no choice but to have the secular education, so-called secular education. Maybe some people have reservation on call it secular education. It is not our issue now. But, uh, and as far as most of the people here are young people, so let us address the young people. Let us not, not, let us not address the parents, because the parents are not listening to us. But for the young people, what can they do? Number of things. Uh, first of all, Sheikh Allah said that you have to be uh, confident of your identity. This is something important, and he explained it, Jazallah khair. Uh, other things that you need to do, my young brothers, young sisters, my maybe children. Uh, first of all, try to balance the time you spend in the secular education, so-called secular education, with some activities that, or with some Islamic activities. For example, it is very important to attend uh, some uh, lectures, some uh, uh, regular lectures, uh, daily lectures, daily lessons, uh, maybe some lessons uh, in uh, lessons about Quran in the masajid. And that's why those who are in charge of the masajid, it is very, very important for them to run madrasas, evening madrasas. In England, one of the main elements that protected the identity of the Muslims in England is the maktab or the evening madrasas, where the children, after spending eight hours in the secular education, they are studying for two hours Quran and in particular Quran. So you young people, you have to make sure that you are balancing it to a certain level. This is one thing. The other thing is, don't spend all of your time with uh, your friends from the secular education. You have to have some friends from the Muslim background. Because if you spend most of your time with non-Muslims who have certain ideology, certain background, and you cut yourself off from your Muslim friends, then slowly, slowly, you will be influenced by the habits and the norms of the non-Muslims. And you will abandon the Islamic norms, slowly, slowly. And then later on, you start doubting Islam. So this is another point that you need to do. The third point that you need to do, don't follow the, uh, the norms of the society. Most of the young people spend a lot of time on the internet or social media, or maybe playing games, something like this, or maybe watch uh, some haram stuff. Don't follow that norm, because if you look, follow that norm, eventually you will become exactly like them. No, try to do something different, something else. Also, in order to do something else, it is very good if you can, if we all can, arrange some activities for the youth. It is very, very important to arrange some activities for the youth. Sports activities, uh, other types of activities, not necessarily uh, Islamic activities or so-called Islamic activities. No, just activities for the young people to mix with each other, okay? The last thing that I would like to uh, say, there are many things to be said, is always think. Many of the young people, they just go with their whims and desires. They don't think. I want all the young people to think of one question and to keep it in their mind all of the time. Yes? Uh, let me take a pledge from all of you, a promise, that you will think about this question. Can I take a promise from all of you? From all of you. By the way, brothers and sisters, who were attending the last peace conference? Yes, mashallah, many. What was the promise that you gave me last time? Read 15 minutes Quran per day. Uh, read 15 minutes Quran per day. Read 15 minutes, Qur minutes Quran per day. And there was another one. Uh, what was it, your brothers, sisters? Memorize? No. We said the minimum is what? Juzu Amma, the last juz of the Quran. 
Was that the promise? Yes or no? Come on. Yes or no? Okay, let me see who did it. So far I have seen some brothers who came and they apologized that they could not do it. They apologized. Okay, I said you are not apologizing for me. You need to apologize before Allah, not for me. Okay, but you pro broke your promise and you lost a lot. So now, who did it? Let me see hands. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, mashallah, sisters more than brothers, as usual. Brothers, young brothers, who did it? <laughs> Memorizing one juzo, mashallah. A few brothers, excellent, excellent. And mashallah, many sisters. But still, we need more. You promise you should fulfill the promise. Don't say, oh yeah, we promised the sheikh. For one year, you were unable to memorize one juzo. Well, I, this is, I, I don't think that this is a good sign. For one year, even after a promise. Anyway, I, I may just maybe rebuke you later, but let me finish my point. I want a promise from all of you. Yes, all of you. To think of one thing, all of the time, at least once every day. Which is, why do we see that Islam is the most and the fastest, the fastest growing religion in the world? And in particular in Europe. Think of that question. Why do we see Islam as the fastest growing religion in Europe? Wallahi, it is so amazing that in, despite the negative image portrayed in the media about Islam, the negative image of Islam, yes, presented in the media, yet it is the fastest growing religion in Europe, in Norway. Wherever you go, you see people are accepting Islam. Is that true or not? Is that true or not? Despite in Islam, you are not allowed to go for drinking. You are not allowed to watch haram. You are not allowed to uh, sleep as you want because you have to wake up early in the morning in order to what? In order to pray Fajr. Uh, in a few months time, we will fast. Subhanallah, fasting, maybe you will fast here in Norway, you will fast for uh, 16 hours, in fact, 18 hours. Yes, and still you young people do it. Is that true or not? It is so difficult, yet many people would like to accept this Islam which makes their life difficult. Why? I will not give you the answer, but it will help you to be proud and confident of your identity and yourself to think of those who are coming to you because of your identity. Yes? So you want to leave your identity for nothing? So think of that. Promise? Come on. Promise? Okay, I want a loud promise. Promise? Promise? Yeah, say, by Allah we promise. No, this is weak. We want a strong one. By Allah we promise. Excellent. Jazakumullah khair. Jazakumullah khair, Sheikh. The next issue I want, inshallah, to be enlightened is that the masses of our community are not Muslims. The, the vast majority of the, our country are non-Muslims. But still you will see that the masses of Muslims are not engaged in da'wah. The masses of Muslims are not engaged in da'wah. Is this acceptable? If not, then what is our responsibility in this regard? Sheikh uh, Saeed. <coughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد um, if we reflect upon uh, many nations who embrace islam just because the interaction of muslims with them because they saw the beauty of islam on some muslims when they saw some muslims who have 
perfect manners and they are adhering to the deen of Allah Ta'ala, the Islam, in all of their affairs, they embrace Islam. It is really amazing to see more than 100 million people who became Muslim, such countries, because of the some Muslims who traveled there and resembled Islam or reflected Islam in the best of manner. A Muslim, when he lives amongst non-Muslims, should realize that this is an opportunity for him to spread the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to relate to those people who are unaware of Islam, to relate to them the deen of Allah, the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Islam. It is a chance for you. It's a chance for you to relate to those people who are unaware of the deen of Islam, to let them know about the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to us, بَلِّغُوا عَنِّي وَلَوْ آيَةً Convey from me even one verse. If all what you know about the deen of Allah Ta'ala is only one verse, then convey that verse to the people. And when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala addressed the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about the matter of da'wah, he told him, O oh Muhammad, tell people, declare to people that your way of life is to give da'wah. The most important matter in your life is to relate the deen of Allah Ta'ala to people, to engage in da'wah, to give people the da'wah, to let people know about this religion and this connection with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and this way of life that will bring happiness, inner happiness and inner peace for people. Allah Ta'ala said to him, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةِ O Muhammad, tell them that this is my way of life. I call towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon sure knowledge. أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي I do that myself and everyone who truly followed me. وَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ I do that myself and everyone who truly followed me and I glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the true followers of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are those who engaged in da'wah. Are those who engage in da'wah. Are those who reflect the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with everyone that they interact with. If we, if you just adhere, as Shaykh Ala, may Allah bless him, said, if you adhere to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your affairs, in your manners, in the way how you interact with people, and people see you, see you reflecting the image of Islam, and then they come and ask you about Islam, this is the greatest da'wah. In fact, your manners, your behavior, your interaction with people should be an open invitation to Islam. Because these guidance and these direction are coming from your Lord, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who knows how you're supposed to interact with others, how you must respect others, how you must deal with others with justice. And once people see this on your behavior and your interaction, they will love your deen, they will love your religion, and they will ask you about it. And this behavior and this interaction will become an open invitation for them to Islam. So let's Let's always remember this. Let's always remember this. We shouldn't be shy of our deen. We shouldn't feel shy of our religion. We should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he chose us to become Muslims and be appreciative to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should understand that everything on this universe is worshiping Allah. Everything apart from the heedless ones of the mankind and the jinn kind. Otherwise, everything. Everything in this universe is worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The trees, the planets, the suns, the stars, the everything, the rockets, everything are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala in the Quran said, تُسَبِّحُ لَهُ السَّمَاوَاتُ السَّبْعُ وَالْأَرْضُ وَمَنْ فِيهِنْ The seven heavens and the earth and everything on them is praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, submitting to Allah the Almighty. وَإِن مِّن شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ 
There is nothing but is praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ But you cannot understand their praise. You cannot understand their worship. So everything in this universe is worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I should be proud that you are amongst those who are worshiping Allah the Almighty. You're not amongst those who are unaware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who are heedless of, of their Lord, of their Creator. And you should try your best to relate to them the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will bring to them happiness, rest, and tranquility in their life. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh. The next issue I would like to discuss, inshallah, is the topic of getting halal jobs in our society. Because as a Muslim living in the West, in almost every field you go, you must compromise certain parts of your religion. Either if you're working at a store or you're working as a, say any kind of field, there might be some kind of compromise you need to do. To what degree are we allowed to compromise to find a job and what is absolutely not allowed and do, yes, let's take this one first and I'll continue later on, shall is there anyone who would like to elaborate on this topic? Bismillah ar rahman rahim Yeah, this is a very interesting topic and normally people do ask about this. Uh, first of all, we have to admit that it is very difficult to find a purely halal job in most of the non-Muslim countries and now to be honest with you in many Muslim countries yes in fact because of modernity or modernization it becomes very difficult for us and, and the prevalent of uh, so many non-Islamic systems even in Muslim world it became very difficult to find a purely halal job so what do we do what do we do the general theme is fear Allah as much as you can. Fattakullaha mastata'atu. Now, in order to implement this on our uh, situation, we say that, first of all, avoid any job that makes you involved in one of the major sins. So, if this job entails that you will be doing one of the major sins, then don't accept that job. The major sins, as you know, are uh, killing, dealing with riba. Yes, uh, I will mention the relevant of them. Uh, of course, riba is not mentioned in the hadith, but it is one of the major sins. Uh, zina, yes, and supporting the enemies of Allah against the Muslims. Yeah, this is also a major sin. These are the main major sins that we are talking about. Doing also harm for any human being, whether he is a Muslim or not a Muslim. Okay, these are the basics. So if, you, if your job is, uh, you will be involved in one of those major sins or other major sins, then don't accept that job whatsoever. The second point, if your job helps achieving those five or those major sins, whether the five or others, so you are indirectly involved in those major sins, then you are not allowed to do it. I'll give you an example. If your job as a computer engineer or as a, com a software uh, development uh, asks you to develop pornography websites, will you do that or not? Will you do that or not? Of course, you will not do that. If your job asks you to develop bombs that will be used to, uh, to kill whether Muslims or non-Muslims, will you do that or not? You should not do that, okay? And you can judge it. So these are the guidelines that, uh, uh, some of the guidelines. 
Now, if the job involves something that is haram, but that does not lead to those, those major sins, directly or indirectly, then it can be overlooked. Yes, it can be overlooked. For example, you are working for uh, uh, one of the, 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 the famous uh, uh, supermarkets. And sometimes you have to organize the food that is not halal food. Yeah, you have to shelf it. That can be overlooked in the West. In fact, what can be overlooked is if you work on a till, and sometimes you might be asked to uh, scan a bottle of wine. If you can avoid it, then of course you should do that. But if you can't avoid it, and most of the jobs have some element of haram, then we say, do it, fear Allah as much as you can, and, uh, and then ask Allah for forgiveness. Okay? Uh, something like this. Um, if, for example, you are a postman, of course there will be an element of haram in your job because you are going to distribute some posts that might have haram material. But that is not directly involved uh, or that is not direct, directly leading to one of those major sins. So that can be overlooked. This is the general guideline. Uh, there, was, there is one more important guideline for sisters in particular, that if your job, uh, if your job forces you or the nature of your job forces you to have excessive intermingling with the opposite gender, then you have to be careful about that job. Yes? Same thing with brothers. But brothers have the ability to control their job more than sisters. Sometimes sisters might be asked to do certain things. Yes, uh, last week I remember, no, no, in fact last month, I received a question from Norway in fact. Was it from Norway or from uh, the Netherlands? N the Netherlands, yes. The sister was working for an elderly house. And she was asked to clean the private parts of some of the elder people. Yes, her job. And we said to her that, sister, you should find another job. Because if that thing is going to happen frequently, then there, there is a real problem uh, with it. So, but with brothers, maybe the level of control maybe is a little bit high. So if for sisters... If that job may lead you to have uh, excessive intermingling with the opposite gender, then you have to be careful. Other than that, fear Allah as much as you can. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh. Uh, just a follow-up to that. In regards to most of the young brothers and sisters here are probably either students now, or they will be students very soon, inshallah, meaning taking higher education. So my question is, which specific fields of study do you recommend them to go into? Are there any specific fields that uh, are better than other fields where you can influence uh, people more? For example, we don't have many Muslims in the media. We don't have many practicing Muslims uh, who are politicians. We don't have many practicing Muslims who are top in the business or we don't have many practicing Muslims who are teachers or, these ki or even leaders or these kinds of fields. Or are there any specific fields that anyone of you, Shaykh, would like to elaborate more about, inshallah? Uh, <laughs> because we're going to do this all day, so we don't have much time. 
I talked about this before, remember, your intention in whatever job you do is da'wah. Look, Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi, he said there are three rules. If you just remember these three. Alif thumma arif thumma kalif. Very easy. Alif, alif al qulub reconcile the hearts. Let them at least uh, not hate you. How is that? Because uh, you know what? Uh, you're a Muslim? Yes. You know that you have 111. نَحْنُ قَوْمٌ جَدْ يَا أَخِي وَاللَّهِ May Allah help you, Wallahi. So, you know when people come knock on our doors and the Mashaykh will testify that, I want to become a Muslim. Why? Did somebody shove Islam down your throat? No, did somebody come knock on your door? Did we actually tell you, listen, if you don't become a Muslim, we'll shoot you, we will take oil away from you? He says, no. So why do you want to become a Muslim? Because I met Brother Muhammad or I met Sister Fatima and they were really the nicest people. When they said a word, they promised, they fulfilled it, and, 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 I mean, I don't have enough time to go into it, but they, what I mentioned earlier is they lived Islam. So they actually like the person. And when they like the person, they arif, then raise awareness, then kalif, then obligate, educate, then obligate. No matter what, you will need fiqh al You understand you live here now. This is called home, right? So you better act accordingly. Do not alienate yourself and don't say that, uh, you know, the us and we, it's uh, uh, us and them. No, it's we. I'm going to be a proactive part of this society that I'm going to give more than take. And I'll tell you, most of us in the world, forgive me, we are consumers. We are consumers, unfortunately. We sit back and say, what have you done for me lately? Give me. I'm going to sit back and collect pogi, right? Unemployment. I'm going to fake uh, whatever it is. to get. The, uh, I'm going to now milk the system. That is a terrible way for da'wah. So every one of us here should be a proactive person that goes to help no matter what field you do. But a field that will influence others, as, as the Sheikh said, but as long as you're far away from the haram, no problems. However, because the time is up, all you have to remember is ihsan. We were commanded to perfect, to perfect everything we do and whatever it is that we do. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us sincerity as much as we can to whatever it is that we decide to take. But if you can influence people, for example, you heard about someone, you know, a, a, a famous athlete, right? And a famous this and they become Muslim. It's like it makes a big deal. A lot of people become influenced by, because of that. So why don't you do that with that intention? As a matter of fact, the scholar says, if you become a doctor, engineer, or lawyer, or media, or politician, with that intention, dress nicely, you get rewarded. You drive a nice car with the intention of da'wah, you get rewarded. It's your intention. So why don't we have our intention from now on, I'm going to get educated, I'm going to be the best in my class, because people will say, a Muslim is successful, not just raggedy, that stays in the masjid, do nothing except that. Why don't we become the, not the consumer, the producers? Why don't we do something for the sake of Allah? You know, the Japanese are tired, man. <laughs> They're inventing and the Chinese are making everything. Come on, where are the Muslims? Dude, we just don't eat and do everything. You listen, you know the, the prayer mat? We actually get it from China now. Who is going to raise the banner now to say, you know what, I am going to do something. Ha, ana, da, here I am. I'm going to do something for the sake of Allah. With that intention, the money you spend for education, the time you stay up to study, everything you do is called, it's your jihad. It's your striving. It's whatever it is that you're actually doing for the sake of Allah. So who is now going to do something? We should, like, you know, I like the Shaykh Wallah's idea. Amongst us, there has to be a leader. Amongst us, there's 5% leaders, natural leaders. So somebody with that intention, when we come back, inshallah, if Allah gives us a, the, the life, next year, I want to hear somebody from Norway, a local, that has done something for the sake of Allah to help humanity, not just Muslims. How many of you visit the sick in the, in the hospital? Especially those who have time. How many of you go volunteer in the police station? How many of you go volunteer in the, in the fire department? How many volunteer to do something good, not take, give? How many of you shovel the snow for your neighbor or cut the grass for your neighbor? Do people come and say, oh, Muslims are here, we want to move into that, uh, the, the, that area? Oh, Muslims are here, let's get out of here. Sell, run away, man. Do people run to you or run away from you? Remember that, think. You have to become a positive, the most influential, the best character like Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be. It doesn't matter what field, man, but you better have the intention to perfect it because that's what you're asked to do. I ask Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala to give us sincerity and make us a reason for people to become Muslims, not to become Muslims. Allah.